Hello, this is just a quick little video to show you how to cut fabrics for the deco quilt. So you will need to follow along with the deco quilt pattern because I will not be giving any specific measurements or instructions in this video. You'll need the pattern for that, which can be found in my shop. So this pattern uses yardage, meaning that you will order fabric straight off of the bolt. So the rules for cutting yardage are pretty universal. You will want to cut as on grain as possible. So with traditional quilting fabric, there are tiny threads that run horizontally and vertically in the fabric, and these are called the warp and the weft threads. So cutting on grain means that you are cutting parallel and perpendicular to these threads. This will give you a nice clean cut that isn't overly stretchy. So sometimes fabric gets folded on the bolt a little bit crooked. So if you notice that your two selvage ends are a little bit off like this, or if they aren't perfectly parallel, then what you'll need to do is refold your fabric. So you'll kind of fluff up the top piece like this, align your selvages so that they are right on top of each other. And then you might need to push up your fabric and create a new fold. Sometimes you might have to just completely iron a new crease up there if the fabric is a little bit wonky. So then what you will do is create a fresh edge on this side. Now I am right-handed, so if you are left-handed, then you're likely going to want to flip what I'm doing so that you are cutting with your left hand first. So what I'll do, and keep in mind there are many ways to cut fabric, this is the way that I find most effective and accurate. So if you already have a cutting system that works great for you, then just go with that. This is how I do it, so take it or leave it. So first I'm going to create a fresh edge on this side, so I'm going to shimmy over my ruler so that I'm not cutting off too much fabric over here, but just so that I'm still covering off this edge that's uneven. And then up here on the fold, I'm going to line up that fold with a line in my ruler. And this is helping make sure that this cut is going to be 90 degrees. So I went past this little edge over here. So let's see, there we go. So I'm lined up right there. So then I'm gonna cut a fresh edge. Okie doke. So then at this point, you can either pick up your fabric and flip it around. What I like to do is just turn my cutting mat. So now my fold is closest to me and now I can start cutting my width of fabric pieces. So I should have mentioned I'm starting with color three here. So if you look at color three, I'm just cutting one and a half inch times width of fabric strips. So I'm gonna cut all of my one and a half inch pieces and then we will sub cut from there. So first I'm going to line up one and a half inches with the edge that I just cut on my ruler. And then it should still be looking square down here. It looks good. So then I'm going to cut. So there's my first piece and then I'm going to keep cutting until I have all of my pieces for color three. Try a different rotary blade here. I think that one needs to be changed out. So if you are having to do that with every single strip, you might need a new rotary blade. There we go. Much better.
So you'll notice that I'm using the lines on my ruler to count over this way instead of using the lines on my cutting mat. Generally, this gives me a more accurate cut because my ruler is pressing down my fabric and really making sure that I'm getting that fabric nice and flat before I cut it. Also, the lines on your cutting mat can warp and distort over time. If you cut the same lines over and over, those lines can get a little bit wavy and wonky and inaccurate. So using the lines on my ruler, I always prefer to do that uh, whenever I can because it just is more accurate. Okay, so then this is leftover fabric. We will set this aside and save it in case we accidentally cut something incorrectly. Otherwise, it will be scraps. All right, so I have all of my width of fabric strips here. So then if you look at the pattern, there are subcuts listed under those width of fabric strips. So once I have all of these cut, then I'm going to cut my subcuts. So what I like to do for these is cut in batches. So what that means is my first cut needs to be eight and a half inches. So what I like to do is figure out how many eight and a half inch pieces I can get from a width of fabric strip. Spoiler alert, the answer is four. So I can get four eight and a half inch pieces from this piece right here. So if I need 20, eight and a half inch pieces, then that means I need five of these strips. So I could go ahead and cut four eight and a half inch pieces from this piece and repeat that five times, or I can cut all five of my pieces at the same time. So what that looks like is I will line up the first piece with a line on my cutting mat, and then I will do the same for the second piece. And I can kind of just overlap them a little bit and then I'll do it for the third piece. The fourth piece. And the fifth piece. So always double check your math before you do this because you don't want to cut up all of these strips and then realize that you counted wrong. So I have one, two, three, four, five. And if I can get four eight and a half inch pieces from each strip, then that'll give me 20. So that's exactly what I need. So then I will take a ruler and cut off my selvages. So what I'll do is I'll place my ruler over my selvages, line up a line on the ruler with the line on my cutting mat, and trim off just what I need to. And for this, since we're cutting through a lot of layers, having a new fresh blade really is going to do the trick for this. Okay, so I've trimmed off my selvages. And so now I have a fresh edge on this side. So then I'm going to take a ruler that's at least eight and a half inches. And I'm going to line up eight and a half inches, and then use these horizontal lines on my ruler, making sure that all of my strips are still nice and aligned here. And then cut. All right, so there's one cut. And then I'll do it again. Okay, so then these are scraps. I'm gonna save them just in case I need them. If I miscut or something, I'll have some extra fabric to work with. But now, in just a few cuts, I have all of my pieces for that first bullet point. So then I will repeat this for the next bullet point. So I'll do a little math, figure out how many of those seven and a half strips I can get per with the fabric strip. And it should be five. So that means I would need four with the fabric strips. And so I will cut 
five of my seven and a half pieces per strip. And again, if this freaks you out, if this is too much for you to handle, then by all means cut one strip at a time. This is just something that I like to do to save a little bit of time and energy. But do whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. Let's see. So I need four strips because I can get five of my pieces per strip. Okay, so now I'm going to trim my selvages. that. So then I'm going to cut seven and a half. Okay, and then for these, since they aren't quite long enough, I'm going to press these open and then I'll cut my remaining pieces from these. So if you notice a little bend around the fold of your fabric, if there's a little bend out here on the edges, then that just means that you didn't cut your with the fabric strips perfectly on grain. So that's why we really strive to um, cut our fabric on grain, especially when we have lots of strip pieces like in this pattern for some of the colors and for some of the pieces It really doesn't matter quite as much But for this pattern you really do utilize that hole with the fabric piece So cutting on grain really is going to ensure that your piece stays straight whenever you unfold it to cut up the remaining seven and a half inch pieces Okay, so now I have all of my pieces cut for the second bullet point of subcuts for my color three instructions. So I'm gonna lay these over here and then I will repeat this process for the third bullet point and then also the fourth bullet point. So once you get this general method down, the same rules really apply for the rest of the pattern. So remember to cut your with the fabric strips first, making sure that they are as on grain as possible. Once the large bullet points are all cut, then you can move on to the subcuts. You can cut multiple strips at once, or you can cut more than one at a time. If there aren't any instructions to subcut for that bullet point, then you'll just leave that with the fabric strip as is. So you might have some strips that are left completely intact. We will be doing some strip piecing later on, so you will sew with this entire with the fabric strip first, and then you will cut it up. So just leave these pieces for when you start sewing. Also remember to use the lines on your ruler instead of the lines on your cutting mat whenever you are measuring your pieces. There's one spot in the pattern where you will need to cut an eight and a half inch times with the fabric piece. So if your 24 inch ruler is six inches or six and a half inches across, then you might not be able to do that with that particular ruler. This ruler is eight and a half inches across, so I really love cutting my width of fabric pieces with this. But if you, again, if your 24 inch ruler is too small to cut those eight and a half inch pieces, then what you can do is use a 12 inch ruler and you can cut eight and a half inches in segments. So you'll cut eight and a half inches and then you'll move it up and then cut the remaining eight and a half inches. The alternative is to just use the lines on your cutting mat, but again, I try to avoid that whenever I can. Other than that, you should be good to go with this pattern. It's just a lot of with the fabric strips and sub cutting. There's a little bit of magic that happens later on in the pattern, so we will cross that bridge whenever we get there, but as always, if you have any questions, let me know. I am happy to help.